Back here in Orlando, Florida for SAP Sapphire 2012. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, SiliconAngle.tv. And this is going to be all about startups, and uh, I'm here with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org. John, we, we love talking startups. We love talking to VCs. It's your wheelhouse. Yeah. <laughs> Silicon Valley, obviously, it's, uh, it's a bubble. It's an innovation bubble, as I say. I was on record saying that it's an innovation bubble, which is different from a regular bubble because a regular bubble bursts and... Uh, no one wins, but I think uh, uh, innovation bubble, Dave, <laughs> first, but there's winners. <laughs> and there's some losers, and unfortunately, that's the way it is. Uh, we're joined with Nino Marakovic from uh, SAP Ventures. Welcome to the Cube. Thank you. Okay, we have Thank another. You. We're yeah. going to have another colleague coming over, Costa, from the uh, startup group. He's going to join us. But you're in the SAP Ventures, so tell the folks out there, update them on SAP Ventures, the structure, how you guys are affiliated with SAP, sure. how it's formed, and then let's talk about the deals. Sure. Well, I'll, I'll keep it short. Uh, uh, we've been around for about 15, 16 years as SAP Ventures as an institution, but a couple of years back, we actually restructured our activities into an independent venture fund. So we are we are now just like any other VC fund that you know of. Uh, it just so happens that SAP is our only limited partner, i.e. investor, unlike other VCs who have pension funds, endowment funds, and have a bunch of them. We have one sole partner, which is SAP. And part of that is because, uh, because our value proposition in part is to provide uh, the companies that we invest in with an, uh, with an entry into the SAP ecosystem, not just SAP, but SAP partners, SAP customers, the whole SAP ecosystem. Is there a fund? Can you talk about the, how much amount is at work here? Sure. It's a, it's a $353 million fund that was established in 2000, the beginning of, at the very beginning of 2011. That's our core so fund. It's fresh money. It's fresh money, yeah. Nice. It's a core fund. Um, and uh, that is focused on expansion and later stage companies. So we like you to have... Um, Five ten million revenue run rate and high growth. Uh, that's the, the 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 core focus for that fund. And then we have a separate new vehicle uh, called the Hana Real Time Fund, SAP Hana Real Time Fund, which is a hundred fifty five million vehicle. And uh, that will be mostly invested in early stage VCs and some early stage startups around the whole idea of real time applications, big data, um, and uh, will help further the army. So what's the lowest you put in for startups? Let's say we have a startup. That's doing real time data. Social so, if data. you guys were doing a fund on uh, uh, an interesting, uh, interesting startup uh, in the real time application data, it could be as little as 250 grand of seed investment from this new HANA fund. Now, that's going to get kicked off in a couple months. Um, is that going to be a separate fund? Or is it going to be more like Excel's big data fund where it's kind of like earmarked? It's, it's actually a separate legal fund. It's okay, a separate legal entity, separate That's $155 million. It's $155 million bucks, okay, uh, which it. is separate from the 350 But it funds. is kind of like the Excel big data fund and it's focused on a particular it's, mission, it's, right? Correct. Or it's much more focused than the, than the later stage fund, which is much broader. In fact, we've done consumer enterprise deals. Uh, globally, um, as is the mandate for the later stage fund, but the earlier the earlier stage fund is going to be now at the focused. recent press event that you guys had in San Francisco. They talked about a fund that was a, act more of a go to market. Is that still the thing? yeah? That's separate from us. Okay, that, that is uh, that is uh, an SAP initiative. It's where a customer they focused kind of correct. Maybe exactly. some soft dollar channel exactly. focus. Exactly. All right. So Hana is actual investments in startups. Correct. The Hana fund in startups and in VCs who will partner with Educate. So they they can invest in in some of these startups. I mean, the whole idea is to make this thing leverageable, right? If, if I were the bottleneck for every single Hana startup, it, it, it wouldn't make any sense. So how work. would you work with, like, say, a super angel or angel group? Sure. You so just give them some cash or give them some. Well, the idea is to become a limited partner in them, collaborate with them, educate them on 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 the value proposition, tell them what we're seeing. We're seeing tons of deal flow in the big data space. We had a couple. We, we talked about Green Fund. Yeah. We were investors in Indeca. We actually um, know a bunch about this space, and obviously through SAP, see much more. And then we get tons of deal flow. So the idea is to actually help even channel some of the deal flow to our partners. So not nice. only be a limited partner, but actually a, a, a source of. So you'll for you'll be a limited partner in correct. these micro VCs. In many of the micro VCs and other early stage, more traditional VCs as well. Nice, yeah. that's fantastic. Yeah, interesting portfolio. Man. I just noticed Black Duck on sure. here too, another open source company. We've been the uh, we're the second most prolific investors in open source, believe it or not. So interesting, right? Uh, I think after Intel, we've done the most open source investments. I think we have eight or nine. Uh, historically, so quite a, a bunch. In fact, of the Lamb stack, we've had Red Hat, MySQL, um, and Zen. So yeah, three of the four much, yeah. companies, right? <laughs> so it's pretty cool. So yeah. how do you go about, you know, determining what you're going to invest? I mean, obviously there's a strategic implication, but uh, can you talk about sort of kind of the mission and yeah, to be how you adjudicate? The, the mission is really to invest in the most innovative and disruptive companies out there, um, and to provide to SAP both financial return and signaling to what's going on in the market. So the first screen is a purely financial one. Is this an innovative, disruptive company that uh, that we can make a, a, a very good return on? And the, the secondary one, is it innovative, disruptive in the broader space? 
and we actually stretched the definition of space from what used to be traditionally more enterprise software maybe 10 years ago. We got music. Yeah, it's good music. Uh, Here, to, it has uh, the music levels. To more broadly, to include consumer companies, to include companies that sort of are a hybrid of both. LinkedIn, I would argue, is a great example, one of yeah, our portfolio right. companies, right? Um, and um, and you might have to lean forward on the microphone to sure. the music in the background. And um, even more specifically, in India, we have a we have an investment called Just Dial, which one could argue is is a, a pure consumer play. So, so we're so your strategic tail is not wagging the dog. You're not arguing. at all. No, no, no. no. In fact, is, the, is yeah. that different than than what most corporate VC yeah. in your experience, or is that just a change in the nature of corporate VC? I I think it's both. I think we've been, um, uh, to be honest with you, we've been set up that way from day one for the last 15 years, but I think we were way ahead of the curve. I think people, for the most part, have tried various different things, realized that no matter what they do, if it doesn't make money, it's not sustainable. If it's not sustainable, you're going to be doing it for a couple of years, then the value is going to be gone. So even if it was of great strategic theoretical value for two years, but you stop doing it, there's little value of it long term. So, so we figured out day one that you need to be sustainable. To be sustainable, you need to generate capital. With good returns, so we've been we've been generating great returns to SAP for a long time now, and in fact, are funding ourselves, so to speak. Right, right. Okay, so, so maybe talk about your team a little bit. Sure. I mean, what's your mix look like? We have a great team. I've um, over the last six, seven years, we've uh, we've recruited a bunch of uh, folks who have pre- most of most of whom have previous uh, investment backgrounds from traditional venture funds. We are a global team. We have eight investment professionals, uh, six of whom are in Palo Alto, one of uh, whom is in London and one in, um, in Waldorf, Germany, the headquarters of SAP. So we cover the globe from those three locations from an investment perspective. Uh, we've got six uh, general partners and uh, one director in the team and one associate. And I'm, I'm very happy about it. We have, we have a good time. We work hard and, and, um, and just, uh, it's, 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 you know, when you love what you do, it's, you kind, of, it's kind of fun. You we, yeah, we do. So we led... Um, we led about two thirds of our last fifteen deals, so ten of the last fifteen. We we try to remain flexible, though, in that most uh, most, if not all, uh, traditional venture funds have a, a twenty percent ownership stake requirement, and try and really sort of religiously stick to that. We just want to be involved with the best companies. So if it takes, if it means taking a one or five percent stake or a three percent stake and only having a five million investment, we're we're okay with that. So uh, is the one fifty five minus the three sixty? Well, I do a plus, right? So you're adding, I thought it was four. It would be 500 something. Yeah. Okay, cool. Great. Um, so what's your focus here right now? We, we're in the conversion networking. Cloud is obviously hot. You mentioned that's here in violence. Like, our big areas are open source, mobile, and, and conversion networking. Um, what do you think about Hortonworks and Cloudera? Obviously, you know Red Hat. Yeah, sure. What's your take on those guys? Look, I, I, we just think that this is one of the most ex- exciting spaces. Big Data and HANA will be part of that. The whole real-time push that SAP is having with HANA Frankly, to your point, converged networking along the whole infrastructure, right? Whether it's the storage layer, the networking layer, it's all getting virtualized. It's all getting sort of real-time enabled. The bottlenecks, the I/O bottlenecks, are getting eliminated from bottom top of the stack. It's, it's a really exciting time, and the amount of data obviously created and being analyzed is just amazing. So yeah, so we're we're in conversations with all those companies you mentioned, plus many others in this space for a potential investment, and are just very excited about about the opportunities in front of us. Yeah, I mean, it, fe- it feels real, right? I mean, it's. It feels euphoric, but also there's a... No, I mean, I, I think the valuations are ahead of themselves, but but what, what is interesting relative to, you know, and I was an investor in the last bubble, is y- you would invest in eyeballs and then hope revenues will trail. Here, revenues are happening. It's actually companies are monetizing just the revenue multiples that, that are um, that are, uh, companies are being invested at in and, and, and sold that are, are somewhat high. But, you know, it, it is true that you have all these mega trends, whether it's the cloud and mobility and all this stuff coming together at the same time. Creating, frankly, a, a perfect storm and, and a great opportunity set for a bunch of companies. Well, you see some pre-revenue exits, right? Like extreme yeah, IO. Yeah, absolutely. What do you think about the old surveillance space? Uh, what's it, Planeteer? What's a government firm downtown? I'm not that familiar with that. No. Um, they are dominating all the Palo Alto real estate right now. Yeah. Their government's the biggest customer. Oh, Palantir. I'm sorry. Palantir. Yeah, yeah, of course. Palantir. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. What do you know about those guys? What I mean... They're raising money at valuations that are just unheard of. I mean, the visualization stuff is, is incredibly cool. I've obviously taken a look at the demo. In, uh, I've seen them demo in a, at a bunch of uh, conferences. What's the valuation? You know? you know, I think the, I, I don't have any inside information. I, I think the last time it was publicly announced at about two and a half billion or something. or But it's, it's way over a billion, uh, certainly, that they raise money at. It's an exciting company. Uh, visualization is a, is a pretty exciting space. You know, other players in the space, including Tableau. 
and um, and some other company very interesting we have some really cool companies on the analytics side too currently in our portfolio not just past including a recent investment called Alteryx mm -hmm. um, that actually uh, is both an ETL tool a platform to ingest outside and internal data sources and then build easily build applications custom applications on top of that for customer so if you wanted to build an application that literally would would estimate in, in your company if you change headquarters, how, how would the average commute of the average employee change? It takes literally three minutes to build that application on that platform. Yeah, so talking about network as a service, is their business model. That's a, oh no, that's a pawn, Alteryx, right? Alteryx, okay, sorry, yeah. got it. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's Alteryx with a RYX, for those of you who want to look at it. So it's a, but the other, I'm sorry, just to finish up on, on that other thought, I think uh, those are similar, similar uh, um, focus areas for us uh, as well. One of the the other ones is is though the consumerization of IT. Mm. Think of LinkedIn. Think of Box. Where you and I, as individuals, as individual business users, can swipe a credit card, use a tool, and then once a couple of hundred or a couple of thousand people within a large organization use the tool, you go and upsell the CIO, whatever the the the, yeah. the senior person with a bigger deal. We love the business model. We've invested um, in, a, in a bunch of companies that pursue it and think it's actually quite disruptive. Well, success factors, I mean, that's not what Should we do, give an but that's sort of self-service. Yeah. We tried, though. Really? We try. Lars yeah. wouldn't take my money. I have a work day. You, uh, you and I uh, uh, yeah, No, we're not. We're not. <laughs> that's a little too close for comfort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I completely trashed them on stage when I asked a question about their database. Remember? Yeah, yeah, right. Eight times. Yeah. I don't know what they're using, but... Like, well, they're well, using I'm a custom. It, I'm just sure it doesn't work. It's a custom. It's a custom <laughs> database. They developed their own. I know. He knew exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Allison sure was trashing on Michelle knows surprised. everything very well. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, 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 he said, I'm well not sure what you're doing, but he went out to trash object store. Upscale. So, this is our big data bubble and it's amazing how much new stuff is coming out and, and well, it's exciting to yeah. us to us our big trend read on the market is that like the first uh, web bubble everything happened yeah. it just didn't happen on the valuation exactly. so yeah. like we see big data as so disruptive that by itself it's not one here or there it's not like web two one it's everything right so like, we think big data is going to create an industry a brand new industry because it the disruption is every part of the value chain and so everyone we talk to, whether it's analytics, manufacturing, oil and gas, financial, every vertical, every activity in the value chain is disrupted by big data. And, you know, I think the, the, the ability to instrument your business for the first time in history, yeah. end to end, no, I think it's has never been done before. But, so like, but I think it's, we're also at the beginning of that trend, right? Because we've, we've talked about the hardware disruption, we talked about now the, all the, the software, the database, analog in that layer. What's going to happen now is the predictive analytics, actually applications that have a heavy analytic component. So it's not just sort of the ability to crunch a big amount of data, but getting actually business insight without having to know what you're doing, without having to all the click tech find it out easily, but actually have applications that sort of correct and say, oh, by the way, there's something fishy going on. You should take a look at that. That's sort of the next generation of things. That we're yeah, and I think, you know, I, I look at it, I look at how hard it is to do that today, but the yeah. demand for that, yeah. and, and we're close on the technology right. side. So that, to me, says it's going to explode with a whole new set of That's applications. Right. Um, how about you spend much time, and John and I were up in Cambridge uh, last week, just meeting with big data startups. Do you spend time in Boston and Cambridge, Mass? We do, we do. Um, you know, we, we spend, we don't have a, a dedicated right. person on the East Coast, but we travel. So we, we travel, I did a couple hundred thousand la miles last year, and so did most of the, the, the guys and gals on the team. So we actually we actually travel and we, we spend a lot of time on the East Coast. New York, in some ways, actually is exciting, if not more exciting nowadays than Boston. Yeah, New York's a lot of spend a good amount of time in Boston. We have a bunch of portfolio companies in Boston. Okay, well, we're going to go to the keynote. It's getting loud in here. Nino, thanks for coming on the show. Heading up SAP yeah, Ventures. Thanks for Thank show. Hana Fun, great Thank job. Thanks. We'll be right back. We're going to watch the keynote, and we're going to take a break. And after the keynote, we're going to have some commentary. Uh, they are not filming it live, or streaming it live, so we are not allowed to, to broadcast the keynote. So we will tweet and bring you an update right after. So stay tuned here. Watch these replays from earlier segments. And right at the keynote, you'll hear Dave and I break down what McDermott said. Be right back.